What's up, y'all? Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I'm a new Awe. I, I I just love to talk about mental health, wellness, luxury, and all things. So today we are going to be talking about the credentialing process. The credentialing process for mental health professionals. Yep. I know it's scary. I know it's overwhelming. Oftentimes, if you're anything like me, you probably default to just paying a company to do the legwork for you. So this video is for those of you who are interested in doing it for yourself. I want to help break it down, simplify it because it really isn't that bad. You just need to get insight into it. And so I'm here to do that for you today. So let's get right into it. So I believe that there are three main steps that will help you in this credentialing process and help you be successful in getting paneled with insurances. First step that you would have already done or in the process doing hopefully is that you have already gotten your CAQH up and running, which is the online database that insurance companies are using for providers to get all the information all at one time. You ha would have already had established your insurance, right? Your provider liability coverage up to a million dollars or whatever the, you know, you decide to do, you have that established. I use HSPO. Um, I found their prices to be pretty good. Everybody varies, but you would have already gotten that part. And also you would have already gotten your state licensures. Remember that is a very big important part in practicing in the field and the work that we do. You have your licensures in your respective states. All that will help you in the future steps. So this is preliminary work that hopefully when you're watching this, you're just like, oh yeah, that's already done. We got that in the bag. We have already taken care of that part. So from there, um, assuming your CAQH um, website is already established, and I'm gonna actually share it here on my screen. For those of you not familiar, this is the CAQH portal. So when I refer to this, this is what I'm referring to. So again, all your information is uploaded. Your but your information as a provider, your MPI, your ad business address, your business email, all those things go in the profile data. And assuming you are at a point where this is already complete, you are in good shape. So number two, the most important thing for you to do is to figure out which insurance panels you want to be a part of, which insurance that you want to accept in your practice. So a lot of people decide on this based on a number of factors. One of those factors that happen to be really important, I think we can all agree, is the reimbursement rate. Now that information is gonna be a little tricky to access because unfortunately when providers sign a contract with insurance companies, part of signing the contracts is agreeing that you will not disclose your reimbursement fee. So everybody's reimbursement fees can look a little different Differently. It's based off negotiations. So they may offer you a number. You have every right to counter offer that. That doesn't necessarily mean that it will be accepted or approved. But I always encourage, especially women, please ask for the money. The worst thing they can say is no, but if you don't ask, you will never get an answer. So always, always ask. Um, so it is a little tricky to find the reimbursement uh, numbers. Some uh, insurances do post that information based on the CPT code. So if you're looking at a 90837, sometimes insurance companies do post that information on their provider website. So per insurance companies have their general website and then they have a provider area where you can sometimes look or put in sometimes the CPT code. And so I think I did this the other day with United Healthcare. I put in the CPT code for 90837 and it spit out me to spit out to me what they were reimbursing or currently reimbursing at during this fiscal year so make a list of the top let's say three five insurances in your area that you want to be a part of another factor to take in consideration when you're building that list is like think about what most um 
employers are giving their employees right is blue cross blue shield one of the big uh insurances in your area based off the employers um you know that's another great way to think about how to sort of how this potentially might impact your private practice later on so that's another great way to sort of look at it and another thing is just to kind of understand if you know that you want to serve a particular population so you know you want to support women who've been battered and you know or or homeless population let's let's use that uh for example you know they are more than likely going to be on some form of state medicaid if they have you know if they've gone through the process of enrolling and you know actually tapping into services so if that's the i you know the population that you want to work with then perhaps the strategy around that would be to panel with your local medicaid your state county however your state does it you know i know california has like they have the state medical and then they have the county medical it's a whole process but perhaps your strategy around that would be to enroll with the state medicaid that way you can work firsthand with that population if that makes sense so that is the first thing that you want to do as it begins as you begin to sort of take upon this process of credentialing yourself um, with insurance companies next thing that you're going to do as it relates to getting credentialed with these insurance companies is that you literally can just put into google you know and we're using united healthcare i'm just stuck there for whatever reason um we can literally put into google united healthcare provider enrollment and from there the first tab will likely bring you over to their network page and so from there they will literally lay out in the on the website um you know are you a medical provider are you behavioral health are you dental whatever have you 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 select your um your designation from there and then from there it'll give you the application from there just like that right it's it's there's nothing magical about it it's literally on their website every insurance uh, operates a little differently but you know for the sake of this video we're using the united healthcare you go into the website, you identify who you are, and then you choose your selected application. From there, it'll ask you sort of identifiable information, your name, your business address, your address for billing, um, your NPI, National Provider ID. You, you know, that's something that I didn't mention in the first part, but you know, one of the things, if you're watching this, you would have had that done already. If you need help in getting that step done, let me know in the comments. We can get you that NPI number. Um, and so you you fill out your application. So let's get to let's let's actually walk through it together on you know using the computer, and you know just go through it together. So as you can see, it has different providers. I am a behavioral health provider. I'm a licensed clinical social worker. So I would go here, and then from there, here we go, and then it's going to take us to this Provider Express website. So they have another. Um, plat or website for us specifically and so i would just click on that and then it's going to take us over to the optimum provider express and so from there i could log in i already have an established account if you don't have an established account you would create account we're in the united states and from there it's a series of questions identifying who you are and also giving them permission to access your caqh I'm not gonna duplicate or reduplicate the application that I already have in the system with United Healthcare, but I'm showing that to you as a reference point just to show you how pretty relatively easy it is to access these applications. And um, the most important thing is that you give permission for the insurance companies to access your CAQH. So it's gonna have all your information as in regards to you as a provider, uh, history, work experiences, all that. So rather than you inputting all that information, all that redundant information into each and every um, insurances platform, it can access that from the CAQH. The final part, number three, I would say is to just be patient. Um, it can take anywhere from a couple weeks up to a couple months, depending on the insurance, and that's just the reality. 
I know further barriers to care, I I'm well aware, but unfortunately these are things un beyond, you know, outside of our control as providers. And so I would check in on your SUPO on your CAQH and contacting a insurance rep each individual that gets paneled with the insurance event eventually gets a rep and this is the person that you'll be communicating with regarding your contract and just to add sort of 2.0 to this third point is that when you do get your contract assuming everything goes through you get cleared um they want you they want to add you to their provider network i want to encourage you to look over those contracts it's really important you want to understand what you're signing and just because there could be some caveats and you know one of the ones that i'm thinking in particular especially for those who own group practices is uh billing um whether or not an intern or a supervisee can bill under your name and so some insurances are going to allow that and some are not it will be stated in your contract whether or not you can or cannot do that so you want to make sure that you review your contract you're familiar with your contract and that you're upholding the contract truly if this is what you want to do in regards to you know utilizing insurance or accepting insurance so that clients can access care an email you know is this is not something that you have to keep in your head or you have to memorize they'll send you an email they'll keep sending you an email too until you check it log in and up uh, every uh, attest that that information is correct and you just want to make sure that again if you have any concerns you contact your rep if you want to perhaps one day ask for a increase right in your fee your reimbursement fee it's it's not impossible it's not unusual to ask you know some people craft letters some people reach out to their rep directly to inquire about that raise and so that's why it's really good to make sure that you are familiar or at least you have some sort of working relationship with this rep and at least know who this person is that you need to contact when in case there's any concerns and then as far as billing goes i use simple practice for the billing purposes you know some people you could directly bill or you know complete your cms 1500 forms on their specific platforms i know cigna has evernorth where you can log into their provider portal and you can uh submit your billing through that i just do everything through simple practice it just makes my life a little easier and so hopefully you have found this helpful hopefully it takes out some of the fear in going through that credentialing process and if you decide to hire somebody there's nothing wrong with that sometimes it's just important to realize that sometimes your timelines and your priorities may not be the same as the individuals that you're hiring so sometimes you just gotta dive right into it and it really isn't that hard i know it can seem overwhelming and scary credentialing process oh my god what is that you know you're so used to especially if you've done agency work there is a department that just handles all that you just give them your all your information so hopefully this all makes sense and it seems a lot more applicable and it feels like it's manageable and so make sure you share this with somebody who's jumping into private practice or considering private practice and make sure you subscribe to my channel for more you know videos and more content and more information regarding practice uh therapy mental health luxury and all things take care